Alright guys, welcome to another video from Maths World Education and I'm going to be showing you in today's video an introduction to integration and uh, as you know uh, integration is uh, a form of calculus it's uh, the sister branch uh, to calculus uh, in contrast to differentiation and think about it, Let's. I'll show you a diagram here you've got, so you've got this is essentially what calculus is all about. So it goes into two, it splits into two branches here. So you've got differentiation. And you have integration. Now, if you think about it, integration is pretty much the reverse of whatever differentiation is. Okay, it's the reverse. So, if you're applying a different, if you're divide, if you're differentiating a function of y, so suppose you've got a function which is y equals two x cubed plus 9 x squared plus 5 x plus 2. So we talked about in the last video about the rule of differentiation and how differentiation is the process of times in the, the index by the coefficients and then subtracting one from the index. Uh, so you'd have 6 x squared plus 2 times 9 which is 18 x plus 5 and then of course the derivative of 2 is just equal to 0 okay now integration so you've just gone from this step to this step so that's uh, that's differentiating but how do we actually get from this step here to this step here. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Now, suppose we need to integrate this function. So we know that y is going to be. How do we get from dy by dx, which we've got, back to y? What's the process of that? Well, what we can do. That's where this notation comes from here. So this means the integrating dy by dx with respect to x. Okay, and then that is actually the inverse of the differentiating which uh, which had taken place. So, for example, how would we integrate? So if we needed to integrate this part of the equation here, so I'm going to take 6x squared plus 18x plus 5. We can integrate that, and we always make sure that we've got a dx there. And dx means that we're integrating with respect to x. Okay, so it's basically this dx basically is basically saying that we are focusing only on the x variable. In this case, x is the only variable anyway. But you'll find in, um, in more advanced uh, mathematics, uh, you can be dealing with more than one variable. Okay, so that's where this notation here becomes ever so more important. So as a rule of thumb, I'm just going to put a side note here. So suppose we've got... Uh, suppose we've got 8x to the b with respect to dx. How do we integrate something like that? Well, as a rule, what you do is you add the power. Differentiation involves subtracting the power. This time we're going to be adding the power. Okay, so in this case you're going to have an a, so the a stays where it is, but instead we're going to be adding the power by 1, so now we've got b plus 1. Uh, now what we also want to do is divide this whole thing by b plus 1. So that means that we'd have a b plus 1 at the bottom here. 
Okay, so let's let's apply this uh, rule of integration to this equation here, and let's see what we get. So, what have we got? Well, we've got 6 there, that stays where it is. Then we've got x, we're increasing the power, so that's going to be 6x to the power 3. And then we're actually dividing by that power as well. And it's always, we're just going to, you've always got to make sure as well that you divide by the new power. Okay, don't divide by the 2, you divide by the 3. You, so you, you add the index first, and then you divide by it. Okay, it's very, uh, it's critical that you get, uh, that you get everything in that. Uh, correct order. Next we've got 18 and then we've got x. Uh, that is x to the 1 so we can say well that's x to the 2 and then divide by 2. And now we've got 5 so that's just going to be 5. And now if you imagine there's an x to the 0 there so you can have a 5, this time you can have a 5x to the 1 divided by 1 which is just equal, it's just equal to 5x. Now now what you want to do, you want to also make sure that you add a constant here as well. Now some of you might, might be thinking, well, why Matt? Why are you adding a constant? Where's that come from? It looks like you've just, uh, it looks like a magic show where you've got a hat and you're pulling a rabbit out of it and saying, there you go. Well, I'll explain that to you. Now if you remember, uh, integration is the opposite to differentiation. Now, if you... Uh, if you different if you differentiate suppose you differentiate uh, the number seven so d by the x of seven is equal to zero now of course this value here could be anything it could be a seven it could be a million it could be anything that doesn't have uh, doesn't have an x or an x squared or an x cubed attached to it so if you think about it, uh, so that is why if you integrate 0, you're going to get a constant, okay? Because differentiating a constant will give you 0. So you've, also, you've, you've got to account for anything that could be here in place of the constants. So I hope that makes sense. And if any of you aren't sure about, still aren't sure, or haven't made that clear enough, uh, be sure to... Put a comment uh, below the video and I'll do my best to explain uh, a bit further. Anyway, we, uh, we digress. So 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. We've got 2x cubed plus 18 divided by 2, which equals 9x squared plus 5x plus c. Now, is that the same is that the same as this equation here? So we've got this function here. You bet it is. So you can see that all of the all the x terms here are identical to each other. The only bit that the only bit that's different is that there's a two here and a constant here. And you've had to you, I've had to put uh, plus a constant, but you'll find that certain conditions. Certain conditions that it gives you in in the question can dictate how you can find the value of uh, of c as well. So you might it might say something like uh, uh, you might, in the question it might say well given uh, x equals uh, two or I should really put given y equals two when x equals zero or given f of x equals 2 when x equals 0, or given f of 0 equals 2. Like any of those can, chances are, if you're required to find the value of c here, you'll be given, you'll be given one of those, um, one of those conditions, either a condition like that, a condition like that, or a condition uh, just like that. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. And uh, I hope uh, I've sort of explained a bit more about how to actually integrate a function. Now, what does that? How do I illustrate? How do I illustrate that? What does integration actually look like on a curve? So, suppose we've got. Uh, 
suppose we've got a curve, let's say that's the f of x axis and you've got x and you've got a curve like that, let's say. Now, we can visualize what differentiation is on this graph. The gradient is basically the derivative of f of x. But what, but what does it look like if you've integrated a function, a function of x? So what would, what would this look like? Well, that's where limits actually, that's where limits get introduced here when, when you're talking about areas. So if you imagine that you've got uh, x equals b, and here you've got the value x equals a. This actually represents the area of the curve, f of x between x equals a and x equals b. So what you'd have is the area under the curve here. Okay. So in this case, uh, suppose you've, let's just suppose this curve is something like, I don't know, um, f of x equals uh, x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus zero, let's say. If you were to integrate uh, that curve between a and b of x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus, uh, sorry, plus zero with respect to x, what you actually end up with uh, is something like this x to the power 4 divided by 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2. Now, normally you'd say plus a constant, but because we're dealing with limits here, because it's giving you limits, you don't have to worry about, uh, about the constants. Okay? Well, actually, you'd do you? No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. So then all you're doing now is substituting all these values in for a and then subtracting all the values for b. So you'd have a to the 4 over 4 plus 2a cubed over 3 minus a squared over 2, and then minus b to the power 4 over 4, plus 2b to the power 3 over 3 minus b squared over 2. And then the difference would be the area between the limits of x equals b and x equals a. So I hope that makes uh, hope that makes sense, and I hope uh, hope you understand it of integration. Uh, sort of makes sense. Um, I do have to make it known as well. You may be asking, well, why is the lim why is the limits here, but there's no limits at the beginning? Well, what I've touched on here is actually a definite integration. So that's called definite integration. Whereas what I'm talking about here is indefinite in integration. The reason why it's indefinite integration is because there's no limits here. It's not giving you any information on on the uh, the integral. So I could I could also argue that integration splits further. So you've got uh, so you've got definite integration and then indefinite integration okay and uh, now you've got a brief introduction there 
regarding calculus and how to uh, how you can understand that integration and differentiation is uh, completely opposite to each other. Okay, if you like this video, guys, uh, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and tap that notification bell. If if any of you have got any questions at all, be sure to drop a comment below, and I'll uh, I'll respond as quick as I can. Thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next video.